What I want to do in this video is talk about the African-American vote and the presidential election of 2020, because there's some really strange things happening out there. And it's very difficult to try to figure out, you know, what's really going on. I mean, I'm not an African-American. I don't live in a mostly African-American community. I don't have close friends or fellow employees who are African-American. I'm retired. I don't have any fellow employees. And it, it's hard to gauge, based on what you see in the media, what's going on. But the one thing that's clear to me, as somebody who's been around for a long time and watched presidential elections, is that something's going on. What can be going on? I think a good place to start are with the polls. If you've seen polls of African-American voters, they're all over the place. Some suggest, you know, Trump will get maybe 20% of the African-American vote. I've seen polls as high as 40% of the African-American vote. Now, if that happens, that's really bad news for the Democrats because they need that vote, especially in places like Pennsylvania and others with large urban areas where they need to carry those areas by large numbers to cover the rest of the state so they win the state in the Electoral College. It doesn't mean so much in California where, you know, Republicans are going to lose no matter what happens. But in a state like Pennsylvania, for example, or even Florida, it can make a really big difference. But there's something about those polls you have to understand that's even more troubling if you're a Democrat. What am I talking about? You have to look beyond the polls. If you look at uh, 2016, I think Trump got about 8% of the African-American vote. But here's a dirty little secret they don't talk about a lot. If you look at that 8%, basically Trump got 2% of African-American women and 6% of African-American men. So he gets African-American men at about three times the rate that he draws African-American women to support him. So if, well, I don't think, it's hard for me to believe, maybe, maybe it's true, but it's just hard for me to believe that 40% of African-Americans are going to vote for Donald Trump. So let's forget that. Let's go with the low number that I've seen, 20%. If that's true, what does that mean? Well, that means if you look at the past percentages, basically three to one, male to female, that if Trump gets 20% of the vote, then what, about six, seven of those 20 would be African-American women and the other 13 or 14 would be African-American men. It's basically a, a two to one, or actually if it's six to two, it's a three to one ratio. So Trump's getting 20% of African-American voters you know, he's getting like half of African-American men. And you say, well, how can that be? But if you look at some of the people, look at the people who have been coming out openly, black celebrities, and coming out and saying they support Trump or they're sort of say something positive about Trump. Who are they? Who are these people? They're all basically African-American men. I mean, other than Candace Owen, who's been been at this for a while with Blexit. But the more recent ones who popped out over the last several weeks you know, you got a little Wayne, 50 Cent, Ice Cube, uh, going back a little bit, Kanye West. Uh, you look at these people, they're all African-American men. So what you're seeing in the media, what you're seeing with black celebrities, fits the pattern of support for Republicans going back to uh, the election of 2016. Yeah, Trump got 8% of the African-American vote, but he was probably getting close to 20% of African-American men voting for him, which is, is quite a bit. Now, this time he's getting 20% of all African-Americans. He's getting, you know, at least double or triple that, somewhere between two and three times that among African-American men. So if I was a Democrat, I'd be really worried about that because Afri Af African-American men are much less likely to vote than the African-American women. And if they're actually coming out and supporting Trump and voting, and they're voting Republican, then you've got like a double problem. The second thing I want to talk about is their reaction to it. And the reaction, I think, has been counterproductive. I mean, if you look at some of the things, not just from celebrities, but from others, it's it really looks stupid. I mean, you know, you have, you know, I guess the classic one, the one we talk about the most is Joe Biden, when he was being interviewed and he said, you know, if, if you're black and you don't vote for me, uh, you know, you ain't black. You know, and, and I, I can't believe that this is anything but counterproductive. I mean, the idea that, you know, a, a, a black person 
especially a, a black, an African American man like uh, Charlemagne the God, needs this old white dude to tell him who's black and who isn't it is laughable. And you have uh, Chelsea Handler, who I think was on the uh, one of the late night shows, you know, virtually, which is what goes on now. And she was talking about 50 Cent, whom apparently she used to have a relationship with. And she, you know, she wanted to remind him, you know, she wanted to remind this guy who, who, who came out and said he's going to support Trump, that he's an African-American man. And uh, I don't know. I'm not an African-American man. I've never been an African-American man, but I doubt very much, you know, he wakes up in the morning and he needs some white woman, some white progressive woman to remind him that he's an African-American man. I doubt very much he wakes up and he thinks he's, what's he, he thinks he's white. Uh, you know, he, 50 Cent wakes up in the morning and he, he's confused. He thinks he's Asian. Uh, you know, what's she talking about? I mean, what kind of nonsense is this? And, and who gets to say, that, you know, only, uh, you know, black people have to vote for Democrats just because they're black. And if you're a black man, you have to vote for a Democrat. And we see this with other people, too, you know, defining blackness. And it's one thing if, if fellow African-Americans want to pile onto these guys and, and go after them because they're coming out and supporting Trump. But, you know, when you have white people doing it, it, it just really looks bad. And I know it looks bad and I know I know it's bothersome because I've seen it happen in academia where you have white, usually progressive women who like to start comments with, especially if you're talking about race, for example, you'd be in a faculty meeting and they'll say, well, I think, and I'm sure Professor Black will agree with me, you know, yada, yada, yada. You know, I don't think all the meetings I've ever been, I never saw anybody say, you know, well, I think, and I'm sure Professor Palmer, who's a white male, agrees with me that they never do that. They never do that to white professors. They never do that to their fellow women. They only, they only do it to African-American professors, where they basically take away agency for them and speak for them. You know, we do. I don't need to ask. It'd be one thing if they said, you know, I think, and I would like to hear Professor Black's uh, opinion on this, that we ought to do this, yada, yada, yada. They don't do that. They tell they assume what Professor Black thinks, which is just what they think, because he's black. There's, there's an assumption that, that white progressives know the inner workings of the African-American mind. And I remember seeing one time an African-American professor, two of these white women kept making the same remark time and time again. And I'm sure Professor Black agrees with me. And finally, he stood up, you know, put his palms on the table, and he said, I, I do not need white women to tell me a black man how I think. And he was really agitated. So I know this is, is, this is a problem and it does bother people. So when I see people like Chelsea Handler doing it or you know, Joe, Joe Biden, I assume the same thing's happening out there, that there are people who are seeing this. And, you know, and, and we know Charlemagne the God came out and said he's, you know, he, he likes uh, Kamala Harris, uh, but he, you know, he, he's not going to support Joe Biden. And I think that's why he doesn't need some old white progressive dude to tell him what he should think as a black man. I mean, it's, 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 it's just so paternalistic, if, if not downright racist. The third thing I want to talk about is social media, especially YouTube. Four years ago, as we were leading up to the election, you know, I would go through YouTube looking for opinions of, from people who were, you know, pro-Trump. And there were, there were some, you know, African-Americans who were supportive of Trump, but they were normally, for the most part, you sort of the old line African-American conservatives, you know, Tom Sowell, Shelby Steele, people like that who would come out and say, you know, that they, they were supporting Trump for one reason or another. They're usually the, the old guard among African-American uh, intellectuals, conservative intellectuals who've been conservative for decades. What I see this time is very different. You still see them, but you see all these new, I must have subscribed to about a dozen uh, African-American, you know, relatively young African-American YouTubers who are uh, conservative, pro-Trump, and, and have, you know, big subscription bases. I mean, uh, the officer Tatum, Brandon Tatum, former cop, football player, uh, I think he's got like 1.4, 1.5 million subscribers. Now, I'm sure, you know, a good portion of those, maybe the majority are actually, you know, white people who subscribe to his channel. But I've seen video of him speaking 
And the audience, you know, at Blexit meetings, and the audience isn't mostly white. So, so there are people out there who are watching him. And, and there, there, are, there are, there's at least a dozen of these people that I follow. Now, most of them are African-American males. I would say, let's see, I, I think out of 12, 10 of them are African-American males. There's two African-American women that, that I subscribe to their YouTube channels. But they have, you know, they have a lot to say. And they have a lot of people who watch them. And a lot of people subscribe to their channels. And they're reaching a lot of people. You know, uh, Tatum probably reaches more people than Don Lamont on, you know, CNN. Uh, and that, that that should scare CNN. That should scare, you know, Don Lemon or Lemonhead or Lamont, whatever, whatever people are calling him this week. But I don't know that it does, but it should. So, so if you look at that aspect of what's going on, again, it's something else that doesn't mean, you know, Donald Trump's going to get 40% of the African-American vote. I think it's pretty clear to me that he's going to do better than he did in 2016. And again, I, as I said, I don't know what's going on, but something's going on. And the things that are going on don't seem to be good for Joe Biden. They seem to be good for Donald Trump. Now, how this all plays out in a percentage of vote, how this plays out in places like Pennsylvania and Florida and North Carolina, Arizona, I don't know. I will say this about Pennsylvania because I think it's important. If you look at Philadelphia, and I've, I've talked about this before in other videos, the Democrats need to carry Philadelphia easily. I mean, there's no doubt that they're going to get the majority of the votes cast uh, in Philadelphia for the president. There's no doubt. But they need to get every vote they can get. They need to win big. Hillary, Hillary's margin over Trump was uh, almost 75,000 less than Obama's over his uh, uh, Republican opponents. And that's about the amount that Trump carried the state by. In other words, if Hillary had done as good as Obama in Philadelphia County, it would have been, the Democrats probably would have won Pennsylvania. That was the difference. And what you have going on now in Philadelphia between the riots, which are probably going to spark white turnout for Trump, and whatever's going on in the African-American community with people seemingly supporting Trump suggests to me that they're going to have trouble carrying the city by a, a huge margin. And you take a city like Pittsburgh, where the, the newspaper there, the Post-Gazette or whatever it's called, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, I think, they've come out and endorsed Donald Trump. It's the first time they've endorsed a Republican since Richard Nixon against George McGovern, which I think says something about the left leftist slant of uh, the Democratic Party. And if you combine that with what's going on out there, which I think is what's also moving the uh, Post-Gazette, it's the people out there who are in, in a part of a state where, you know, calls dying, fracking's becoming the new thing. They know what their constituents want, and it's not the end of fracking. It's not the end of fossil fuels. And I think, you know, these are the people who, who pay their subscriptions to subscribe and advertise in that newspaper. The economy goes down out there, they're going to go down with it. So that, that leads me to believe that's why they're probably backing uh, Donald Trump. Now, does that mean, how does that translate into votes? I don't know. But if you got people who are sort of on the line, maybe that'll push be enough to push them over for Trump. But if you look at what's going on in the western part of the state in a big urban area like Pittsburgh, I mean, how many African Americans out there in the Pittsburgh area work somehow work in industries connected with fracking? You ever think about that? I mean, do they want to lose their jobs? Forget about race. Forget about color, ethnicity. I mean, they're Pennsylvanians who are working in the fracking industry. I'm sure they're not all white. If they have jobs, probably very good jobs, they don't want to lose them. And you got Joe Biden walking around saying he's going to end fracking, he's going to end reliance on fossil fuel. So you combine those things with what's going on in Philadelphia right now. And, you know, I already posted a video uh, that, you know, I think Trump's going to carry Pennsylvania. I think he's going to carry it even more easily than I did two weeks ago. And I think that that's, this is all bad news for the Democrats. You need to remember, back in 1968, after the riots, Richard Nixon doubled the percentage of the African-American vote that his, the previous candidate, got Barry Goldwater, had gotten. Goldwater got 4%. Nixon, despite everything that had happened from 64 to 68 with civil rights and Lyndon Johnson and 
you know, all that stuff. Richard Nixon got 8%. He doubled what Goldwater got. And Nixon got between 12 and 15% in 1972 when the Democrats ran a far lefty like George McGovern, whom I'm ashamed to say I voted for in 1972 because I was I'm one of those former liberal Democrats that the party moved away from, like so many others. So if you look at that, you know, 15, maybe 15% 15 for Richard Nixon, the prospect of Trump in the wake of what's been happening this summer, riots, urban riots, mostly in African-American communities, where most of the communities that suffer from the riots are African-American. And when you pull the police out of these communities and you let the rioters riot, you know, who's getting hurt? White people up in Northeast Philly, South Philly, Southwest Philly? No, it's the people in North Philly and West Philly who, who, who are going to get hurt. And, and you look at that, you look at all the other things that's going on and this paternalism it, and it's racist paternalism. I mean, when you see white people telling black men that because you're a black man, you have to vote for Joe Biden. You know, it, it's like, you know, uh, Candace Owen talks about being on a, you know, they went from one plantation to the other. They're on another Democrat plantation. The Democrats were the party of slavery and they had blacks enslaved. Now the Democrats are the party of, you know, current policies in urban areas and blacks are still on the plantation. If you're black, you know, you were a slave, no matter what the truth was, you know, if somebody asked you, how do you like working here? How do you like being a slave on this plantation? How's your master treat you? Oh, he's a, he's a good man. He, he's, he takes care of us. He, you know, sees our needs. He's not bad. He's, he looks, you know, he lets us sing and he gives us church and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And because you couldn't say otherwise, and that's sort of the way it is today for African Americans. You know, it, it's fine. If, you, if, if you're, you're black, you want to vote for Joe Biden, go ahead. But do you need, if you decide you don't want to, do you need a white person, some white progressive woman, comedian, who's, you know, coming out and telling you you're black, you have to vote for Joe Biden? I mean, who gets to say that? It's almost as if they, they look at blacks as, I don't want to say slaves, but as people, it's very paternalistic. You know, they rely, you know, we're, we're, your, we're the people who are looking out for you. We know what's in your best interest. It's just like those, those white women I, women I talked about telling the African-American professor that they knew, they, they were sure he agreed with them. You know, we're white progressives and we know how you think because we're so smart. We can see into your brain. We can read your mind. We don't need to ask you what you think. We don't need to ask you who you're going to vote for. We know who you should vote for. And that's Joe Biden. And as Joe said, you know, if you're not voting for me, you ain't black. I mean, you can't get more paternalistic than that. You can't get more racist than that because they only do that to black people. You'll never see, you know, Joe Biden say, if you're a Jew and you're not voting for me, you ain't Jewish. You're not a Jew. You're not a real Jew. You know, nobody would say that to, to somebody who's a Jewish American. Nobody would say that to an Italian American. I don't need, you know, Joe Biden telling me as an Italian American how I'm supposed to think and vote. And he would never try that. Because he's not, you know, he, he knows that's not how things work with white people. But they do think that that's how it works with black people. That black people who, who come from countries, if you look at people who come here, you know, your ancestors were slaves, but it's one thing. Imagine if you're a Nigerian and you just, you know, you came from Nigeria and you became an American citizen. And you come from a country that has a, a plethora of, of, of parties and, and divisions, and political uh, religious, tribal, ethnic, you know, I mean, there's been lots of problems in, in Nigeria over my whole life. I, I grew up knowing the Biafran problems. If you look at all that and all the differences in Nigeria, you know, why would you think that when you get here, why would you expect white politicians to think, oh, you're black, so we know exactly how you think? They would never do that with Irish immigrants or Russian immigrants or, or, or uh, uh, Vietnamese immigrants, you know, or, or Korean immigrants. Oh, you came from Korea. All Koreans must think alike and vote alike. No, of course not. Koreans have all kinds of political divisions. They come here, they bring them with them. Some lean left, some lean right, some are in the center. 
Some are very, some are Christian, some aren't. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it's all mixed up. And you never see white progressive politicians telling Asians how they should vote, or if they don't, they're not Asian. You know, you would never see Chelsea Handler say to a, uh, I don't know, a, a, an Irish celebrity, uh, you know, if <laughs> I would need to remind you, you're an Irishman and, you know, you need to vote for Joe Biden because he's Irish. I mean, they would never do that to white people. They would never do that to Asians. I don't even think they know enough not to do that to, to you know, what, you know, Hispanics. I mean, you've got Cubans, you know, who are not voting for Biden. You've got, you know, Venezuelans, then you've got Puerto Ricans, and you've got Mexicans and Hondurans and Nicaraguans, and they all have different experiences and all different political views, think differently. You know, Biden knows enough not to say to them, you know, you never see Biden say to the Hispanic community, if you're not voting for me, you ain't Hispanic. You ain't Latino, or he'd probably say Latinx, because that's what it would say on the screen. He'd probably get confused and mis mispronounce it or something. But they do it with blacks. And why do they do it? Because they're racist. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you know, what Chelsea Handler did, or as, as one black YouTuber calls her, uh, Chelsea Negro Handler, you gave her a middle name, which I thought was really nice. Uh, what Chelsea Negro Handler did was paternalistic and racist. And she did it on national TV. And you don't see the progressive, call, progressive left calling her out for it. And I think that that stuff only is more likely to make African-Americans vote for Donald Trump. Maybe they don't like Trump. Maybe they just want to, you know, tell Chelsea Handler to where she can stick it. I don't know. But as I've said at the beginning, something's going on out there. And I don't think it bodes well for the Democrats. I think it is going to help Donald Trump. And as to just how much it helps Donald Trump, we'll know a few days after the election, once they start mulling over the uh, exit polls, which, you know, I wonder how many of these African-Americans who vote for Donald Trump would even admit it to the exit poller that they did. So even then, we may, we may never know. We may be able to guess if Trump wins really big margins in places like Pennsylvania. We can surmise if, if that, that number, the, the swing in Philadelphia is even worse than Hillary Clinton's turnout in 2016, then we can guess that there's something big happening and it hurt Joe Biden's chances for becoming president of the United States. And we'll see soon enough. What do you think is going on out there? Do you have any insights? Your friends, relatives? Maybe you're African-American? I don't know. Uh, let me know in a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you can. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends, and until the next time, keep fighting.